Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak. We're going to do a video today and we're going to talk a little bit about binoculars. Basically, uh, my thoughts on them and what you should strive for, what you may or may not need. Both of these binoculars you're seeing right here, these are, are 16 years old. They've been, I've had them for a very long time. Got a set of Swarovski 7x30s. Got a pair of Swarovski uh, 10x42s. I also had a set of Swarovski 8x40s, or I'm sorry, 8x42s. I've had a set of Leica 8x42s. I've had a lot of really good binoculars and a ton of garbage binoculars, or uh, I should just say lower end binoculars, not quite as good. And there's nothing wrong with some of those either, and we'll, we'll get into that. But we need to talk a little bit about specifically these as far as high end and what makes them worthwhile. Now, Swarovski. These SLC line, which you're seeing right here, this is the SLC binoculars. They've been around for a very long time. They quit making them for a few years, thinking everybody would then jump up to their EL series. No offense to their EL series, but I'm not really, I don't, I can't justify the double, you know, it's basically a double cost. It's just two times as much as these are. And I don't see the advantage from that. And you have to remember that I'm an optics person. I, I, my life lives through the lens of a camera, high end stuff. This camera that I'm actually recording this on with the camera and lens combo is over $6,000. This is lenses and, and vision through a lens and understanding things like uh, chromatic di distortion and uh, uh, edge distortion and, or chromatic abrasion, edge distortion, um, vignetting and uh, phase correcting and understanding all these, these different things are, are part of what make my job what I do. So they're important to me, they're important that I understand them and they're important in the way that I can use them. The same things apply to optics in here as well too. There's a reason that I think that the SLC line from Swarovski is the best version that we pretty much ever need. Uh, it's high end, high quality, which we'll explain why and what the benefits of that are, what makes them that way. But we'll also, um, like I said, when it comes to the EL series, I'm not knocking it, but I don't think you get your dollar, your, your benefit for dollar out of those your smile per mile um, for the amount of money you're gonna spend I don't think the benefits of the EL series are really all that there for you and they, they are better per se a little bit but again I don't think they're double the price better but the SLC line now that it is back um, and it's been back for a couple of years it is way more improved than what these are with better coatings better got a little better grip design to it it's, it's better again these are old binoculars Will I upgrade to the new ones? No, not anytime soon. These I expect to last me the rest of my life. That's one of the beauties of buying high-end binoculars of that caliber is they will. So think of that. I mean, if you think of the fact of how many binoculars before I bought these that I would go through over a five-year period, they would almost pay for a pair of these anyway. So in these I expect to last the rest of my life. Like I said, you're talking 16 years old for these binoculars. They've been there, done that, seen it, and they've been a lot of places. And like I said, of the, all the other ones I've tried, these are the ones that stand a test of time and have been used. They're used every single year. And they're, they're incredible. I, I, I cannot say enough good things about them. The new ones, though, much better. So there's a lot of advantages there. But... Um, when you start talking about binoculars of this caliber and you start talking about the prices that they end up being, I know it gets hard to justify and swallow it, but there are benefits to it that make it worthwhile. Like I said, number one is the fact that you're going to buy these one time and they're going to last you the rest of your life. You're done. You don't need any more. They're guaranteed for life. So all that stuff is taken care of and covered on any kind of level, which is nice in its own right. So that's an advantage. There's also a lot of other binoculars that offer the same kind of warranty and stuff like that too that are good, so I get it. So what makes these so much better and so much worthwhile? I will get into all the nitty gritty stuff for you, but in a nutshell, you're going to see better. You're going to be able to pick out things better. You're going to have sharper edge detail, better definition, better color rendition. They're going to be brighter. You're going to have a wider field of view. You're going to be able to count antlers more precisely, more quickly. Their focus rings are super fast. They come into focus very fast. Uh, they're very high quality built, durable. They're going to last a lifetime. They're going to stay waterproof and they're you know nitrogen filled. So they're going to uh, maintain that. They're harmonically sealed or her hermetically sealed or whatever you call it that technical word is but they are top shelf top of the line their magnesium bodies rubber coating they are incredible 
So yes, you're going to pay a little bit more, but it's going to be worth it. Is there other ones that are close to it that are just as good? No. Are there other ones that are close to it in price or maybe that are, are a few hundred bucks less that are, are good enough? Maybe, but I'm going to give you a thought on that too. My opinion is that this would be, should be what you're going to strive for if optics are important to you. Now, if you're just an eastern whitetail hunter that's going to go out and you're going to go out sit on your back 40 and you're going to do that 10 times a year, this may not be what you want. But if you're going to go on a hunt where you have to specifically size animals up or understand or be able to judge them or count points before you can actually harvest them, uh, this stuff is going to make a difference. If you're going on a western hunt, something like that, where you need to be able to pick animals out, uh, you need to be able to score sheep on the other side of the hills, things of this nature, or you're going to be glassing for a long time, these will prevent the headaches. These will keep you in the game. These will make the difference. They are worthwhile investment for that aspect. These, I use these ones, these are 7 by 30s They're not even made anymore. They're my absolute favorite ones. As a whitetail hunter, these are with me all the time. I swear by them. I love them. They're incredible. They have other models out there. Now they got the 8 by 32s or they got some other ones that aren't bad, but the 7 by 30 my absolute favorite. I wish they would bring them back, but there's, I guess, not enough people out there that you don't know enough about binoculars to understand the value of what that is. Uh, but you, it, it's near impossible to find a 7x30 today. I think Minox still makes one. Um, and then uh, you have the 8x32 or 8x42s or 10x42s. These are 10x42s. These are the ones that I would bring with me when I go on my Javelina hunts or when I go on to uh, Western hunts out there. But the Javelina, especially because I can actually pick them out of the brush with these. It is amazing how many animals out there that I will see with these before the guide with his binoculars will see or my hunting buddies that are out there with their binoculars that they'll see, this makes a tremendous difference. I will always get, I will see the game before they even have a chance to. And then I point them out and it takes them, you know, five minutes to understand what I'm trying to show them through their binoculars. But I'm seeing it perfectly through these. Another advantage to them is uh, when, I, when I used to hunt in Missouri in a specific area, they had a eight point or bigger rule basically for their deer. It was nice with these because I could actually score that animal and count the points from a distance and know if it was a shooter or not a shooter before they got too close. These make a big difference for that. So they are incredible on every level um, and well worth the investment for the SLC one because the SLCs are not that expensive. You might look at them and think they're they're Pretty expensive, but they're not that expensive. Um, I'll have links down below. You can check all the specs on them, and uh, you can see what the prices are, and you can purchase them right through there if you want to. And I'll also throw in some links for some other variables because my, my suggestion is that you skip the middle of the road stuff. The low-end stuff has got very high quality today which I'll also put a couple links to those in there for you too. But the low-end stuff has got very, has become very good to the point where the middle road, the, the you know, the $500,000, $800,000 binoculars, they're, they're not, in my opinion, worth it. You don't gain enough from the two, three, four hundred dollars $400 binoculars. You don't gain enough with the middle of the road over those to make it worthwhile. But these take everything to a whole new level. So again, these are worth it. These are what you should strive for eventually if that's the kind of stuff you're doing. But until you get there, I will put some recommendations down below here for you for binoculars that I think are phenomenal. Now, when we start talking about some of these specific things, I mean, what makes them so much better? What makes them so good? Again, somebody who lives my life through a camera lens, understands all these things, I'll kind of break it down for you into some simple uh, simple version of terms. But um, these have field flattening lenses in them. That's incredible. The way these lenses are cut, what they do, they avoid pin cushion, which means that it's a, or a globe effect. So when you look through them, you don't have that almost fisheye or that little bit of globe effect as you're scanning. This tree is perfectly vertical. This one is vertical. You're seeing everything exactly as you see it rather than it fish bowling as you look and go across there. Those um, 
um, lens flattening uh, or field flattening lenses in there are incredible. They make a tremendous difference, especially when you're glassing and so, or when you're trying to find an animal out there. The wide field of view is absolutely incredible. You have long eye relief with these as well too, which is nice. So you, you don't have to fight to have that specific spot. It doesn't matter if you're up here, if you're up high like this, you're down low, you're in, you're, I mean, you're finding your field of view in them very quickly. Um, or your eye relief in there very quickly and it makes it nice. Um, and then the, uh, they, these are HD, now mine are not HD, these again being a little bit older. They are still low dispersion lens or glass, but they're not quite the level of the HD models that are out there now in the SLC series. Again, 16 years old, technology has improved. But what you'll get with yours, the high, um, the HD, the high density fluoride um, low dispersion glass in there is, is absolutely incredible. The color rendition that you're going to get from these is going to be off the charts. I don't know of anything out there that will compare to these as far as actual reality in the colors and the rendition of what you're seeing out there in that HD quality. It is the best that your eye, that our technology out there today can provide for your eye. So it's incredible stuff. Um, the reduced chromatic abrasion. Chromatic abrasion basically in a nutshell is when you have um, each color has to go through that prism. As the colors go through that prism, they're trying to line up with the, and get each color in focus. But trying to get the focus point of this color and the focus point of this color, the focus point of this color and the focus point of all these colors to converge so that they all come into focus at the same time is what you're basically, that's chromatic abrasion. What happens is if to, a, to an untrained eye, you may not see it, but when you really start focusing, that's what causes a lot of headaches. Um, is that these colors are out of focus. Your eye sees them, but it automatically tries to fix it for you. It's like when you when somebody tries to fool you and they write a letter and they go, uh, the, the mailman came. And you say, oh, you didn't see the extra the. Your mind fixes things and puts it into perspective. It will do that. But in order for your mind to do that, and your eyes to do that, it's going to come at a cost. Chromatic abrasion your mind will try to fix for you. And it's okay and does a pretty decent job, but not as good as it can be if uh, with a lot of different binoculars out there. With these, the amount of reduced chromatic abrasion really converges all those focus points in there. The phase corrected prisms really align that so that you get very little chromatic abrasion. It means less headaches, better color rendition, uh, better everything, sharper images, sharper. What you're seeing through there is going to be much crisper and clearer because all these colors are converging on the same point. So chromatic abrasion is a big one and these are top end when it comes to being able to rectify that. That's huge. The field of view on these things is incredible too. Field of view is how much of a distance you see when you look through these binoculars. So you put those binoculars up and you look through them, the distance that you can see out there is your field of view. The bigger the field of view is, the quicker you can find where that animal is because you, you build those reference points of where you're looking at and you can see it. The wider field of view though, the more some of these other issues that we've been talking about come into play with the distortion and the edge distortion and uh, chromatic abrasion and uh, pin cushion or barrel rolling, those things come into play. They have got it down to a science where you get with these binoculars, you get the maximum field of view without any sacrifice of anything else in there so that you get the quality too. So it is a win-win on every level there. Um, the bodies are built out of magnesium on here. Magnesium is lighter weight and it is really strong. The durability factor, they're, they're not super lightweight binoculars. These are, these are great, but I mean, even in their size, they're not ultra lightweight binoculars. They're built to last a lifetime and hold up to everything. So the magnesium housing gives you the durability. The rubber skin on here, this thick rubber skin, priceless. That's the reason I got rid of the Leicas. The thing I hated about the Leica binoculars is my hands froze all the time. Every time you had your hands on them, you were freezing cold in the cold weather that we hunted. These, never an issue with these. This thick rubber coating, which you can see on there, how thick that rubber out is, it's over that magnesium. It just makes these binoculars absolutely comfortable to use in all weather conditions. It, it's just flawless. Um, so that's a huge one there. The twist up eye cups, Incredible. Pop-up eye cups? Why? 
I, I don't understand why. Those are loose, floppy, they don't work good. They're just, uh, I, I get it why some of the companies use it, but on a high-end binocular, twist-up eye cups with stops along there is priceless. But you can set these anywhere you want, up and down. You can see that goes up and down. But if you wear glasses or you have different eye relief for your eyes, you can control anywhere along there that you want them to be and it stays. So, and they're just rock solid and durable. So the best twist up eye cups, best eye cups period in the binocular market ever in history has always hands down gone to Swarovski. They do it better than anybody else does. And they are removable. So you can unscrew this and take it right out for cleaning purposes to get any dust or anything in there. But you can see that awesome, um, uh, where for a twist up feature of that eye cup in here, but absolutely incredible to twist up eye cups. Uh, like I said, skin phenomenal. They are um, uh, hermetically sealed, I think is the word they use for it. But what it means is not only are they O-ring sealed, um, as many of them are, they are nitrogen purged as well too, but the quality and the, the time spent to make sure they're perfect in 16 years, I've never had a problem with these binoculars ever. And I hunt, as you guys know that listen to my podcast and you know this stuff, I hunt in the rain. I hunt in all kinds of conditions. These things have been dropped off a boat. They've been dropped four feet down into the water and it took me a half hour to find them. They have been through everything wet and water-wise you can imagine. Swarovski even recommends that to clean them, just run them under running water to clean them out. You know, I mean, it's it's... They are 100% waterproof, fogproof, and done the right way. So there will be no issues there whatsoever. <clears throat> and then the coatings on these things, the coatings on the ones you'll get, if you were to buy these today, are way better than the coatings that I have on mine. Uh, again, 16 years difference and a lot of technology changes. But the advantages to the coatings on the prisms is tremendous. And then you have the coating on the lenses. The, the, ones on the, the coatings on the prisms offer these enhancements all right they're going to give you better better color better uh brightness they're going to give you better rendition they're going to give you better sharpness there's a lot of great coatings that go on to these prisms that are inside of here and that's phenomenal and then you have the coatings that are on the actual lenses as well too that not only help gather light they help prevent water spots uh they make them more scratch resistant they're they're just they're, they're mineral type coatings and they're built very well and they're done right. So um, that having those coatings on it makes a tremendous difference. And again, the new ones are loaded up the right way. Um, and uh, the, in the color or the phase corrected prisms on there, like I said, they that phase correction time, rather than just buying a generic back four, which you know for many years used to be the best prisms. If it's got back four prisms, it's got good ones in your lower end binoculars. And not that they're bad, but it's a standard prism gets put in there and that's it and done. These are 100% built for them, phase corrected, designed for what they're doing, optimized for this, coded to be corrected, and it makes a difference. The quality level is there uh, because of that. Uh, again, reducing the eye dis, um, eye dis, or your uh, edge distortion in there. So um, edge distortion is where they may be bright and crisp and clear in the center, but as you fade to the edges, those edges get blurry. A lot of people think, well, that doesn't matter as long as they're center sharp. Well, it does matter. If you pull them up and you're trying to find something, if you can't see edge to edge in there clearly, you're going to start getting the headaches. And what's going to happen is you're going to, as you go to pan, that distortion in there is going to start screwing with your eyes and it makes it very tricky. And you're basically losing almost half of your field of view due to the distortion and only have a clear center. These severely reduce the edge, distor edge distortion in there. So you don't have that issue. Tremendous quality in these when you're looking through them. I, I promise you, they're incredible. Um, and then uh, vignetting is darkening around the edges. Another one that you get a, you have to deal with a lot in the lower end binoculars. Very little vignetting in these, none that I, can even, I can't even identify it. So they are crystal clear and it's bright and sharp from edge to edge all the way through. They are absolutely phenomenal. So that's some of the things that make the differences. Like I said, the focus rings are really, really fast. Um, the set, you know, everything about them is just top notch, top quality, um, high end. These are binoculars that you will buy and you will have them the rest of your life. Again, the new ones out there are phenomenal. They're, they're better than what these ones are. Um, they do come with the, uh, you get the rain covers on there, you get the covers on the bottom, you get the whole deal. They come with all that. I, I don't 
I don't use them. I don't use anything. If it's raining, I tuck these inside, tuck them right inside my shirt or inside my rain gear. I don't use the covers that are on them. But they do come with incredible caps um, and that kind of stuff, which you can see in the link below so you can see all that sort of stuff. But if you're looking for high-end binoculars um, or you're going to be doing hunts of a lifetime or hunts that require glassing, it's going to be really hard to beat the Swarovski SLC series. It really is because they are affordable per se affordable i should say but i mean for what you're getting and how long they'll last they are affordable uh and they are as high quality as you can get for that money and for money even way beyond that so um so i, I can't rave enough about them top notch top quality now if you're not ready for these completely okay totally understandable you may never ever want to get into something like this and if you don't that's fine too there are some great options out there um, vortex i think is one it is a cut above the rest their quality i don't own vortex binoculars but i know people that do i've recommended them to a lot of people and i've looked through every model they have in detail through stores and again keep in mind that when i'm looking through them i know what i'm looking for my life happens to be through a lens so i i've seen them and of, of there's other great ones out there too but the vortex line that kind of really grabs my attention and their quality for the lower price point is phenomenal so i'll put some links below for those too but that's something i would recommend if you're looking for good quality binoculars and on a budget or not ready to get into this those are ones that I would recommend middle of the road stuff like I said I'm not knocking it but I don't think there's a reason to go from a, a vortex couple you know a few hundred dollars couple hundred dollar pair of binoculars and then go to a $500 pair and then hopefully upgrade to an $800 pair and then hopefully upgrade to a $1,200 pair and then hopefully upgrade to the I, I don't think it's worth it I think you're better off just getting the, the the Vortex lines, which like I said, are pretty phenomenal, running with those, saving up your money, and then jumping straight into something like this. The middle of the road stuff, I don't think the value is really there. This, whether you wanna call it a monopoly or what, but there isn't a better binocular in my opinion than the Swarovski SLC series. So anything else is I, I, I can't justify spending more money on something, or I, I should say I can't justify buying something that may cost a little less thinking you're getting closer to this. I would recommend going with the low end stuff in the beginning until you get your, your feet wet, know what you're looking for and you get set. And then when you are ready to upgrade, I would aim this direction. That's that's my opinion. That's the way I would recommend doing it. I don't think the middle of the road stuff can hold a candle to this. And I also don't think it's much better than some of these Vortex optics that, uh, that I'll, I'll put a link in there for you below. I, the video's getting kind of long. So I'm going to let it go here, but definitely check those out. That'll give you the specs on these. Uh, again, these ones no longer made. They are out, so they are not an option. But the 8x42s and the uh, 10x42s in these, gold. Absolutely incredible. And as you can see size-wise, they're not really a whole heck of a lot different. Um, here, I'm going to see them, but there's not really a tremendous amount of difference. The reason I like these was they, they were a seven power. If I had a choice to go with an eight power in this size or an eight power in this size, I'd probably go with the eight power in this size. Uh, just because you get a little more light gathering with the 42 millimeter objective. But there are eight by 30s or even eight by 28s that again for a whitetail hunter are phenomenal binoculars. Uh, if I was doing a uh, Western hunt and things like that, like I said, I would definitely want an, uh, eight, at least an eight or a 10 power, uh, eight or 10 by 42 type binocular like this. So thanks for watching. I'll be back with more stuff soon and we'll talk to you later. All right, bye.